Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, um, it's, it's going to be covering um, a popular topic. Um, I have the Samsung S90C and it is, when it comes to the 4K space at least, my first 4K television that isn't Dolby Vision compatible. So, you know, there's the HDR10 versus the HDR10+, Plus, the Dolby Vision. And I have r pulled up. It's a nice resource I use, you know, just to quickly check out some benchmarks, um, different tech reviews, things like that. Something that if I need something more specific that YouTube doesn't cover, um, this is one of the websites that I'm looking at. Because they just have specific equipment and they do specific things and you can get much more detail from them. Now, <clears throat> as this uh, says in the description of all this, the HDR format is a video technology that's just going to enhance the picture quality on your television. When it's being compared to regular content that's in standard dynamic range versus high dynamic range um, in a nutshell. Now I'm gonna leave both of these in the description, but I also have this website here. And if you notice in my thumbnail for this video, I sort of have like the Kool-Aid um, logo that, you know, that you've seen even today or back in the day growing up um, because some Consumers out there, they definitely drunk the Dolby Vision Kool-Aid without even knowing um, the different technologies and what's going on um, up today when it comes to TV tech. And just what do I mean by that? I'm going to bring it up shortly. All right. So my current television, and I didn't purchase it directly from Samsung, but... This is um, from the source. So the Samsung S90C does not support Dolby Vision. And I'm gonna break that down here. Where Dolby Vision, you know, supports up to 68 billion colors with HDR10 Plus that supports only up to a billion different color shades. So the reason why I'm showing this information to you it's because for you to research this on your own and to also have it as a reference in the description. Now, here's the thing. Now, I'm going to tell you why some of you drunk the Adobe Vision Kool-Aid, including myself, because it was marketed. It's marketed more. It's talked about more. It's the standard when you're using streaming applications such as Netflix. Um, and various other applications. So you do see Dolby Vision more than HDR10 Plus and HDR10, and there's a reason for that. Now, here's what's important as well. Dolby Vision has a mass color depth of 12-bit, and HDR10 Plus has a mass color depth of 10-bit. Dolby Vision, um, and, and once the 12-bit panels are in the mainstream in terms of the major television brands that's out here, like TCL, Hisense, Samsung, LG, Sony, you know, just to give some examples, you know, once they are widely commercially available, Dolby Vision is truly going to shine on a 12-bit television set or a monitor things like that however the adobe laboratories is going to mark market it and sell it to the consumer this is the thing with me when it comes to adobe vision unless you have a high quality panel that's going to compete or looks similar to a quantum dot OLED panel from Samsung or something similar to Sony from this year, like the A95L. Getting a television such as Samsung for a QD OLED, let me tell you something. I'm not even missing Dolby Vision because the quality difference between this OLED 
and my previous OLEDs is very noticeable. You're getting an increased peak brightness. You're getting better color volume, luminosity, uh, just overall, just a better image at the end of the day. And just Dolby Vision alone just cannot compete with that. Um, when we're talking about Dolby Vision, you have to have the panel technology, what's driving it, what's that processors like, what's the features of it. Is the Dolby Vision implemented correctly? Because if you've been looking at reports, there's been reports of Dolby Vision on television sets that hasn't been implemented correctly. Rather, it's too dim, it's too dark, um, there's some issues going on uh, with the colors, and I believe the A95L has had some issues that has been reported as well on that television set. Um, the point that I'm making that is that <clears throat> I drank the Kool-Aid and I'm man enough to admit it um, because I used to think that the Samsung wasn't a movie TV, it was more for gaming because it really didn't support Dolby Vision. You know, it didn't support the standard. Well, I'm here to tell you, F the standard. Go after the premium panel technology, um, which is what I did and which is what many others have did. So where I chose Quantum.OLED over Dolby Vision and it's just so many more benefits and quality that Samsung is bringing to the table to the point where I'm not even concerned about it no more. I have an Apple TV 4K, third gen plugged into the TV along with a Nvidia Shield plugged directly through my Nakamichi and everything just go through eARC. And um, I have to say that it blows my Dolby Vision experience on my LG C2, just almost out of the water. Um, I can't say that it's a, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a night and day difference when we're talking about color and brightness and you have to add in the fact that it's an OLED panel on top of that. So there's perfect blacks. So it's just a noticeable upgrade. It, it, it's a generational leap in tech. And that's just something that Adobe Vision alone just can't compete with. And also it depends on your television set as well. Um, if your television and that processor and that TV isn't driving it correctly or is not doing specific things, you may have a worse experience depending on what brand you chose and what route you decided to go. Now that's not a knock on you or anything because I have a Hisense UAG in the basement. That is the brightest television I have up to date. I think 1500 nits of peak brightness. Um, it's a LED. Uh, it has Dolby Vision and all that. Um, it has the bells and whistles but it has the cons of an LED panel where you may see the black smearing effect or some people may call the rainbow effect. Um, it doesn't have as great of a contrast as its better comp competitor, which is mini LED. And it definitely isn't touching a contrast on OLED panels. It can suffer from blooming. <laughs> it can suffer from uh, when you're playing games, uh, certain ghosted effects, which the terms I recommended or said earlier, it matches with that as well. The thing is, it's not a perfect panel. Um, no panel is perfect, but that's a TV that shines the brightest of all my televisions. But when you compare the quality of each, uh, it's sort of in the, the lowest tier, which is kind of crazy to think just how much in two years things can change. But uh, definitely do your own research and, you know, just don't drink the Kool-Aid. Um, just Dolby Vision is not the end all be all. Uh, and, and, and you can read through all this. You can read through the background um, HDR 10 plus, you know, open source. 
Dolby Vision is more closed. You know, Samsung and Amazon introduced the HDR 10 plus and with with Samsung being sort of like that number one brand of televisions where they're selling the most units. I can kind of see why they went a different route, but I had to experience and purchase the tech to see it for myself. You know, so like that's the important message that's in this video. And I don't want nobody to think that I'm a Samsung agent or I'm, I'm being paid off. Listen, they didn't send me a 3K check plus warranty. I bought this with my own money because, you know, there's a lot of talking going on. You know, people running their mouth um, on the Internet. And, you know, for me, QD OLED was always on the radar thing about it is that when I first got into the OLEDs last year, the C2 65 inch was like $1,800 plus tax around Black Friday. And then when the S95B came out, right, it was like three, I think it was like a little bit over three grand for a 65, for a 65 inch. And that just wasn't in a budget at the time. So what I'm getting at is it was always on my radar. And I knew that they did not support Dolby Vision back then. And I still wanted to try the technology. So when it was my turn, um, you know, I took the risk, took the gamble, and I benefited from it so far. And I'm just here to tell you that the Adobe Vision experience on my previous TV, they just don't match the HDR10 or HDR10 Plus on this TV that I have here. And that's the honest to God truth. Just, just want to keep it a stack with you. I'm just going to tell you how it is. Um, if you've been looking at my review process so far for this television set, you know, I've been covering some things and some scenarios in which if I were a viewer, what would I want to hear about or, or see when it comes to a television like this? And that content will be continuing on. Um, I just want to give y'all the heads up. You know, now this isn't meant to uh, promote a fanboy war in the comments. Uh, please keep it respectful if you are going to comment on this. And, and definitely let me know and let others know what television panel are you rocking um, that supports Adobe Vision if you don't like the HDR uh, format. Um, cause I'm interested to know. So until next time, peace out. Thank you for watching and take care.